Hey everyone, welcome back. Um, before we start, I just want to say thanks for participating in the the previous exam that we've done. Um, so we received an overwhelmingly amount of responses. Um, there were about 200 people who participated and the scores look fairly good. So, so thanks everyone for participating. Um, today we're back with, with another topic about the damage formula for ROM. And today's topic is a little bit more advanced compared to the previous topics we've talked about. And I think it's about time we actually started talking about this. So our topic for today is multipliers, multipliers 101, or understanding the fundamentals of multipliers. <laughs> um, set your expectations. We're we're going to talk about the fundamental structure of how they work. We're not going to talk about specific multipliers. I think we can tackle that in a different video, but um, we should be talking about the fundamentals first. I think a basic understanding of how they work is more important than you know going for the specific multipliers right away. So we're going to focus on, on how they work, how they interact with one another, and of course the definition and the logic behind it. Before we start, just my usual disclaimers. Um, I'm not a professional developer. I'm not a programmer. I also don't know anyone or I'm not affiliated with anyone who works in XD or in Ragnarok. And everything that we will be discussing today will be solely based on my understanding of the in-game codes and my actual gaming experience. So as usual, take everything with a grain of salt. Um, all, all that we're talking about, all that we will be talking about today would be in theory. And, you know, as you know, nothing trumps actual testing. But the aim of today's video is to give you an understanding of how how things like this works in the game and how the game actually tries to to compute for the various amounts of damages it dishes out on your screen. Okay, this is actually the second time I'm recording this already. <laughs> um, I noticed several mistakes in the first iteration and so I thought I'd just re-record the whole video. Um, to set your expectations, that first one lasted for about an hour. Um, I'll do my best to make it shorter. But this is the agenda. Um, so first we're going to define what multipliers are. <clears throat> now we're going to talk about the logic. And then I'm going to show you my personal hierarchy of multipliers. And then lastly we go about the in-game application of how these multiplier works. I want to set your expectations before we go in there. I don't have any in-game footage right now to show that, you know, this is how it actually works. <laughs> um, it's because in order to do that, you pretty much would need to have a clean character, something that doesn't have a lot of unlocks, something where you can freely move um, values from one multiplier to another which sadly I don't have, and I don't have time to create one. Um, I wanted the comparison to be as fair as possible and as clear as possible. And I believe that if I'm going to use my character and, you know, show you the comparisons, the way my character is built, you know, just won't, won't, won't give the, the amount of clarity it needs for us to be able to understand this. So let me apologize for that beforehand. But if you follow along, and if you do have a basic understanding on algebra, then you should pretty much be able to, to get the gist out of this video. Also, I know a lot of people are going into videos like this, um, looking for the best or recommended multiplier or the best build. Just like in the previous videos, I'm going to sell you up front. That's not something that we're going to be discussing today. I don't think in any of our of the videos I'll be doing, I will be able to give you what's the best, okay, the best in slot or the best build. 
you know, I don't think it will ever come to a point where I can recommend something like that. Um, like what I've been saying in the previous videos, there is no cookie cutter build in Ragnarok, so so I'm not gonna prescribe anything because I don't wanna I don't want anything to be taken out of context. Okay, so let's quickly define what multipliers are. So multipliers are multipliers, too many R's, <laughs> are variables used to increase attack by multiplying them with a the value stored inside the variable. So, so these highlighted sections here, these are all multipliers. Um, if you don't know what these are, um, I recommend to revisit the very first video I uploaded, which is the introduction to damage formula, that's where we discuss these mul multipliers and the sources. Now, of course, these multipliers are coming from either your skills or Essier or various cards or equipments from within the game. And, you know, just looking at this, you already know why we're having, where we're talking about this topic in this video. Because there are limited gears, limited slots, limited enchantments, a lot of people would want to maximize and, you know, get the most out of the the multipliers they're investing into. So the logic on how multipliers work is fairly simple. It's very similar to how algebra works. Actually, this is algebra. <laughs> if you look here, right, you know, you have these variables, attack and then base attack. I mean, these are nothing but the X and Ys you were <laughs> you were looking at when you were in high school, right? So this is nothing but algebra. So the, the first step is it collects the variables. It collects the values and stores them inside these variables. That's why you see all of these. So, so these are lines of commands that tells the game to collect all of the values, store them in this particular variable. Once the values have been filled in the variables, it's gonna, or it will execute it. So once it has been executed, you know, that's how the actual damage computation works. Now, I wanted to talk about this because it's important that you keep this in mind. We're gonna return to this particular logic later on, but it's important that you keep this logic in mind. Um, next off is my personal hierarchy of multipliers so when i talk about my personal hierarchy there's a very specific rule that i followed in terms of ranking the multipliers um, as we know multipliers are um, variables used to multiply you know a whole number or in this case is your attack sources which is attack base attack refine attack or true damage. So keeping that in mind, the way I classified multipliers is by the number of sources they multiply, because obviously not all of these are equal. But before we go there, I just want to make sure that we're all in the same understanding. In the game, there are you know, we generally refer to damage as something that reduces your HP, right? But what we seldom talk about is what type of damage reduced your HP. Um, actually, there are two types. So one is attack damage, where majority of the damage, you know, in the game is categorized on. And then there's buff damage, um, which select attributes or select skills utilized to reduce your HP. So what we will be talking about today is based on attack damage because buff damages are a little bit crazy. They don't follow a specific format. Um, it's just basically how it was coded. And it's just important that we separate that out because, for example, counterattack halo is buff damage. Twisted time bomb is also buff damage. Since it's here, it doesn't necessarily follow the succeeding slides that I'll be talking about. They have their own computation in the variables affecting them and how those variables or multipliers affects, affects them may be different from how, how it works in the general attack damage. 
so we're not going to talk about buff damage so so like poison you know the the hp reduction from poison or the hp loss from poison burn stone curse bleed all of those things we're not going to talk about that what we're going to be talking about today would be simply on attack damage and in attack damage it would be you know physical and magic and then of course you break it down by auto attack and skills okay so just to quickly discuss um this is my hierarchy of multipliers as i talked about earlier the way i categorize them is based on the number of raw sources they multiply um these are the common sources and these are the common multipliers there could be some sources and multipliers that are specific to a job or to a skill um, i didn't include them here we can talk about that in a separate discussion but i wanted this to be more of a general slash generic discussion so i only included variables or multipliers and raw sources that are that are common and you know are generally used out there so everything with a check is being affected by the multiplier on the left those with a an x mark means it's not affected which means even if i have 200 percent even if i have 100 percent attack percentage the attack i'm getting from strength or dex will not be multiplied by that your attack window, sorry, your stats window, the attack value you see there, actually multiplies base attack. But in reality, when when you're already computing the damage, it does not include that. Refine attack as well is not multiplied by attack percentage and skill through damage. So, so it's pretty straightforward. Um, if you don't know what these are, I recommend you go back to our previous videos where we talked about this. Um, some of you may be asking, where is Ignore Defense, where is um, Penetration? So Ignore Defense is a part of Def Reduct. Um, we discussed that in the Def 101 and 102 videos. Dam Reduct is where Penetration is. We haven't talked about that yet, but I think that'll be the next video after this. <laughs> and so, as you can see here, it's pretty straightforward on how I categorize them. So these are low because they only multiply one type of or one one raw attack source this is classified as mid this is high and then this is the best of course if you've noticed the lower you go here the more difficult it is to actually get these multipliers which i think is by design right i mean generally if you have a certain multiplier that multiplies every attack source you have you just go straight for it, right? And then what happens is the whole game becomes... I mean, it loses diversity in the builds. I mean, everyone would just go for the best multiplier there is, right? And and Ragnarok has been pretty well known to be one of the... I mean, at least for me, <laughs> one of the mobile games that offers a lot of diversity in terms of character builds. Actually, that's one of the reasons why I haven't shifted to other games yet. Um, in majority of the times, I've been pretty much bored with the game already, and it's mostly just War of Imperium and PvP that keeps me in the game. But you know, if I go somewhere else, I mean, I probably won't get the same same fun out of character building as I'm getting here. So I know some of you may be asking, okay, Idol, you're saying penetration is in da damage reduction. And then damage increase is where PDI is, right? Why is it higher compared to penetration when obviously when I'm in the game, when I add something in penetration, it gives me a higher damage compared to when I add something in um, PDI. So the explanation is simple. Um, damage reduction includes, you know, damage reduction from tenacity as well as as your penetration. So if you don't have any penetration, the value here is generally less than one, which means it actually reduces your damage. So by adding penetration, you're bringing it closer to one, or you're putting it, you know, you're you're 
you're putting it at par with damage increase, which, you know, in 90% of the time is equals to a value of one or more. And I know we talked about this before. I don't know if you watched the video on the introduction to damage formula where we talk about Timmy and his speeds. So that, that same logic, right, on why it is better to scatter your multipliers. So that's because dam reduct generally starts lower, right? And dam increase is actually, most of the time, at one or higher. But if you put their values at the same level, right? Say, for example, if dam reduct is equals to one, and dam increase is equals equals to one, right? The the per percent increase in damage, okay, you know whichever is more effective will be decided by your refine attack. Because if you have zero refine attack, then they pretty much give you the same amount. But if you have something in refine attack, then that's when damage increase will win. That's provided that they're already at the same level or at the same value before you make the comparison. Okay. But generally, you know, when when you're in the game, dam reduct is almost always less than one. So therefore, when you add something in penetration, it it tends to show you higher numbers compared to damage increase. Okay, so don't get confused. Um, in in the essence of comparison, because you're actually doing an actual scenario, you'd see that penetration is better. Um, however, if in the off chance you're in a scenario where the level of damage increase and dam reduct is at the same value, you'd see that it actually flattens out. And if you do have refine attack, you'd see that damage increase actually wins. That's because... Dam reduct does not cover a fine attack. Okay, now you may be asking um, where skill damage is. It's here in skill end. Okay, it's called skill end because the... Let me show you real quick. So the actual formula where it is included is here. So skill end is equals to one plus skill damage minus skill damage reduction. So it's called skill end. Same thing for normal end. Okay. And then dam change per is nothing but the skill multiplier. So that's different from the skill damage. The skill multiplier is you know, the number, the percentage you see in the skill description. Okay, so for physical auto attack, um, there's one thing that I want to call out before we start here. For physical auto attack, your attack, okay, has a, you know, there's a bonus to your attack, which is your strength and your dex. So it's actually strength multiplied by five and dex multiplied by three for range and melee. Sorry, melee and range respectively. So what I'm trying to say here is, let me go here real quick. So there's a value here called normal attack add. So it's here. So if you're melee, um, you get five multiplied by strength added it added on your attack. It's not gonna show up. This one will not show up in your stats window. And if your range you get dex multiplied by three. So yeah, this is one of one other dilemma you have when you're building your character, right? Do you want to put in strength for auto attack? Or you know, maybe if you're an RM, right? An auto attack RM. So do you want to put strength? Do you want to put it in in? How do you want to balance it? So just keep in mind that if you're an auto attack type, you actually get strength multiplied by five um, on top of your attack. You don't see it in your character window. So these are the 
the interactions between the multipliers and the raw sources. And this is their rankings. So here you may be asking again, hey, Ido, um, crit damage and damage increase, why are they in the same rank? I mean, obviously I've seen a lot of videos and I've seen charts out there saying 10% crit damage is equals to 4% damage increase and so on and so forth. Um, technically, they, if they're at the same level, similar to penetration, right? I mean, the logic and penetration, right? If they're at the same level, actually, they're pretty much the same. It's just that crit damage always starts at 1.5. So innately, you already have 50% crit damage. So what you will see here is if you have 50% damage increase, right? And you have 0% crit damage. If you add 1% in crit damage and you add 1% in damage increase, it would just amount to the same, to the same increase in your end damage. So it doesn't really matter where you put that in. The only reason why you're seeing, why you're seeing a higher increase in damage increase is because the value for crit damage is higher. Okay. Um, yeah. So again, if you don't know what these names are for, <laughs> I don't think, I don't think we have enough time to, to go through them one by one, but you, you can go to our introduction to damage formula. It's all discussed there. For magic skills, um, there is, there is one big difference. So you know how in physical, you see element here as a low modifier. In magic, it's actually a high modifier. So the the order is swap, swapped. <laughs> and it is actually at par with magic damage increase or the arcane enchant. And you know, as well as as well as your range dam, which is the AoE damage increase. So yeah, um, keep that in mind. If you're building a magic base character, uh, magic element plays a big role there, and it's a heavy multiplier compared to magic attack. And then this is magic auto attack. Um, so one key thing to highlight here is normal end. Um, I've asked a couple of people around, they think some people are under the impression that zeal or the auto attack damage does not increase your auto attack for magic um, but it actually does so so i had my cousin test it and they also asked a couple of people in discord and they validated that zeal does increase um your auto attack damage even for magic and actually it's shown here pretty much uh, I don't know if you can see it, it's probably too small for you to see it, but let's zoom in a bit. Here, this is normal end, right? And as you can see, normal end appears in both um, magic and physical. Okay, so that's my hierarchy of multipliers. It's not necessarily true in all cases. I mean, what I'm simply saying is that if you're going to base it on the amount of raw sources that they're multiplying, then this is how I would rank them. Of course, in terms of utility, it could be different, right? I mean, because obviously element here is high, but you know, you don't really have a lot of cards that that would increase your damage on all elements, right? Therefore, in, in in general sense, if you're a single element, if you're a single element um, damage dealer, right? And whatever your element is, or whatever whatever the the investment you have in that element um, does not work for your other skills, then they're pretty much useless, right? Like for example, in for ninja, right? I mean, the main damage dealer for magic ninja is the dragon, or the dragon skill. I forgot what the name is. So people who would like to boost the damage of that generally wears um, flame earrings, 
Now, if you suddenly cast Ogare, which is wind, or if you suddenly cast um, the Toad, which is water, obviously that's not gonna that's not gonna help, right? So, if you're single, if if you're dealing damage in single element, then yeah, it's a good thing to focus here. Otherwise, you probably would want to focus on something else. The same concept works in race, right? So, you may probably um, invest in Hydra card because in PvP everyone is demi human, but then you have Rune Masters, which can change to Demon Race, which would instantly nullify your Hydra cards. So it's all a game of balance, and you know it's just important that you you know that you know how these actually interact with one another. Okay, so keeping that in mind, um, and you can always go back and, and rewind um, to look at the tables if you want to get a copy of it. Feel free to just copy, take a snippet, and refer to it if you want. But the important part here, and the reason why we talked about this, is to understand how they interact with one another. And we probably won't get a sense on how it works unless we look at how the game actually works it out. So if try to chart, so try to chart the, you know, the way the damage works and how the damage progresses. When I was making a video for Rune Masters, so the auto attack type of Rune Masters. So I was doing a damage calculation video on that and I basically have this file where all of the, all of the multipliers are there and I just have to key in I just have to key in the variables. So we've used, I've used that just to display um, how these multipliers work and to show you why it's best to spread out your multipliers. So this is the first example. So these are, these are the variables that I've used. So this is the raw attack, which is 7K. And then these are all of the multipliers. So if you notice, I kept everything at one, right? Except for attack percentage and crit damage. If you sum up all of these multipliers, they amount to 23. And I, I summed them up so that I can have a balanced comparison. Okay, right? It doesn't matter what I compare. If I'm not going to use the same amount of variables, then it's not going to be a balanced comparison. Because you can see here, right? Um, my attack is 7,000, and the first step is multiplying it by attack percentage, which is 3.5. So this brings my, this brings it to a little bit over 20K, right? Maybe 21K. And then since the succeeding multipliers are all one, it really doesn't change anything there. And then come crit damage where it's 5.5 it multiplies whatever amount we have by 5.5 and you know the end result is you get 140k now for the next scenario um i tried using same amount of multipliers but i focused on final damage and result um obviously these are the best multipliers in the game right I, we categorize them as best. So as you can see, we're still at 23. Um, everything is still one. And then your raw attack is still 7K. So here we're at about a little below 140K. And then here we are just at a little bit above 140K. So there was a change, obviously, um, but not that big. So the next comparison um, that we've done is we've tried to spread it out, but I need two distinctions just to show how effective, how much more effective it is to spread out your multiplier. So the first one is I didn't put anything in final damage in result. The second one is I actually just used a sum of 21 in the multipliers, which means you know, everything is just 1.5, you know, except for some of them. So as you can see here, um, the end result is 400k. And you'll actually notice this in the game. And 
currently it will be difficult to to mimic this because you already have multiple variables or multiple values inside of your multipliers but this is just showing how it actually works so you know spreading it out even if the amounts are smaller would actually give you better results that's because you are multiplying a number to a number that's greater than one multiple times which means that the result or the increase that you got from the previous multiplier rolls over to the next multiplier so when you multiply it you're multiplying not just the principal amount which is 7k but you're multiplying 7k multiplied by 1.5 so that's why you know that's why at the very end you're getting a much higher value compared to the previous iterations where in the number or the raw attack only got multiplied twice by a number that's greater than one. So I hope this explains it. Um, this is the reason why it's better to spread out your multipliers. Of course, not all of these multipliers would be easy to get and not all of these um, would be applicable to your enemy, right? I mean, <laughs> race pattern, for example, again, you know, when you're, when you're fighting RMs, you know, it's pretty much, <clears throat> it pretty much doesn't make sense to use Hydro cards for them, right? Because once they use Darkness Awakening, you pretty much are attacking a demon race. So, it really depends, but the general rule is try to spread them out if you can. Of course, if you're just a casual or an average player like me, you just grab whatever you get, right? But if you have the luxury of of min-maxing, then you would want to spread them out. Okay, so the next topic is something that I need you to come in with 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 a glass that's only half full okay so I, I need you to have an open mind because what we're going to talk about next is is a misconception that has been around for years now ever since the game started and i'm partly to blame because i never really took time to try to correct that misconception um but it just irks me whenever we get into discussion i thought this would be a good this would be a good time to to clear that out and to, to set the record straight. So, yeah. When it comes to multipliers, um, people have been talking about multipliers having diminishing returns, such as, you know, if I put too much in attack percentage, it eventually diminishes, right? The value I get from it diminishes or maybe crit damage, right? And, you know, we've seen videos around that and, you know, we've done actual testing and that's what we've seen, which is pretty fair. But actually, if you look at the formula mathematically, only defreduct or m defreduct is the only one that follows the law of diminishing returns, sorry. You know, if you look here, so this is, this is diminishing returns, right? This is how the graph should look like. You know, if you chart it out, if you chart out the numbers, if you put it in the graph, this is how it should look like. When we charted out def, that's exactly how it looked like. This is diminishing returns. Okay? But the others are not. I mean, that's a straight... Look here, right? I multiplied by 3.5. Do you see it curving? It didn't. It's a straight curve. From dam reduct to call crit, did it curve? It didn't. It's a straight line. It's not diminishing returns. Okay? It multiplied it straight. It did not diminish the result. If it's diminishing return, it would look like this. So, so you may be asking, right? You may be confused right now. Um... Okay, if you're saying it's not diminishing return, how come I'm seeing less and less damage whenever I put something in attack percentage, right? You know, right now I have 50% in attack percentage. Um, I'm dealing about 100k. I had 
I, I'm not dealing 110k, I'm dealing less than 110k. So why is that if it's not diminishing return? And this is where, this is where the confusion and the misconception started, right? I have seen a video that was way, way back and I was just too lazy to correct it. Um, the premise was this, right? You know, you have 10K, 10K crit, you know, when you were attacking, attacking a pouring, right? You add 10% crit damage, then it should, should have given you 11K, right? Why is it giving you less than that? So, so that's, that's a premise that started all of this. And then, you know, the problem there is the point of comparison, the point of comparison and the execution on, on the added value is what's fundamentally wrong in, in that premise. And actually to a certain extent, when we do damage comparison, when we try out a new gear, we tend to follow the same pattern. And that's why we feel like there's a diminishing return. And that's why I went to great lengths to discuss this, the logic, right? Which is collect and execute, which means you collect the value first in the container before you execute it. And so let, let, let's talk about this in detail. So let's say, for example, just for simplification purposes, your damage is equals to attack multiplied by attack percentage, right? Which is A multiplied by X is equals to damage. So, which means if I have 50% attack percentage, I have 10K raw attack, my damage is currently 15K, right? 15,000. Now, what would happen if I add 10% attack, right? So this is my damage currently at 50% attack. If I add 10% attack, right? What I'm expecting is 16,500. This is what most people are expecting, right? Therefore, when they get a value that's lower than this, they immediately think, oh, it's because of diminishing returns, right? The reality is this is an incorrect expectation. Okay. This is wrong. This is wrong math. This is not how you should be doing this. You have to understand that your 15,000 is a product of 10 K multiplied by 1.5, right? So when you add 10 K, you don't multiply this value. You add the 10% here in X because that's how algebra works. So here in this example, this is what it looks like. So it's 10K multiplied by 1.5, which is a 50% equals 15,000. You add 10%, you expect it to be 15,000 multiplied by 1.1, which is wrong. This is not how algebra works. The reality is, this is how it's going to look like. It's still 10K, okay? And then you multiply it by 1.6, which gives you 16,000. That's the correct way of doing that. Now, I know it's difficult to arrive at this because our characters aren't exactly pristine, or I would say untouched. We all have these innate modifiers already or multipliers already, and it's very difficult to move them around so that you can get a clean comparison, you know. So this is pretty much expected. And this is because we're comparing adjusted value versus adjusted value. But <laughs> I just wanted to, to talk about this because it irks me whenever, whenever there's a discussion on this. And like what I said, I'm partly to blame because I've always been too lazy to correct this. And, and to be fair, correcting this doesn't change anything. Okay. The, the gist is, is still you you have to spread out your multipliers, right? Just because it's not diminishing return doesn't mean you should, you should just, you can focus on it, okay? <laughs> I mean, you still have to, to spread it out. And the reason behind that is because that's just how multiplication works in general. 
um, you know, when you when you multiply a number multiple times by a value that's greater than one, you generally tend to have you know, a bigger result than multiplying a number once by a value that's greater than one. I mean, that's, I, I think that's just how basic math works. So, so it's not diminishing returns. The only thing that's diminishing returns is def and mdef return. Everything else is just plain math, just plain multiplication. Okay, it's just that we were comparing adjusted values versus adjusted values and therefore our expectation was skewed. So again, like what I said, nothing's gonna change. You still follow the same logic. In conclusion, right, if you still wanna min max stuff, you still have to spread out your multiplier. Multipliers, sorry. Um, <clears throat> of course, this also comes with a challenge on how difficult it is to actually get some of those multipliers that you have very low amounts of, like, you know, like final damage or skill damage or normal attack damage. So, so it's still pretty much challenging. But yeah, I hope, I hope that cleared it out because I've always been too lazy to correct that. And I thought since I'm making your videos on multiplier, I might as well just take the time to talk about it. But yeah, they are not diminishing return. Like crit damage, right? There is no, there is no cap at 350 percent like some people are talking about you know some people would tell you about yeah the increase is very minimal maybe it's a soft cap it's not it actually just the per percent increase it was giving you before is the same thing it's just that you were comparing it with an adjusted value okay and then therefore your expectation was wrong I know it's difficult. You probably won't be able to test it out, um, to test it out on an unadjusted value, but I, I just wanted to correct that. I mean, of course, it's definitely up to you if you want to believe that or not. But I mean, if you look at this, if you look at this graph. It, it should pretty much tell it to you already. Um, if you did spend some time um, listening to your math teachers in high school. Um, this graph should pretty much tell you that it's not diminishing returns. Okay, but yeah, feel free to take it with a grain of salt. Of course, I'm not the absolute, um, you know, <laughs> source of, of truths and um, knowledge about Ragnarok. So I can be wrong, although I'm fairly confident that I'm not wrong. But yeah, I can be wrong. You know, just, just let it stay at that. Okay, so also the second part is make sure you get every raw um, attack in areas where you won't have to sacrifice a percentage attack, which means um, your guild blessings, your, um, your enhance or strengthening on your weapon, and your, your accessories. That's because as you've seen before, the multipliers just simply multiplies a raw va value. If there is nothing to multiply, then your results will be nothing, right? Any number multiplied by zero is zero and zero multiplied by any number is zero, right? One multiplied by any number results into that number and any number multiplied by one results into that same number <laughs> so so they're equally important your multipliers and your raw sources are equally important so please make sure you maximize that okay so, <laughs> so i think i wasn't able to beat the time um it's still almost an hour so my apologies for that but i hope you learned something um, I hope you learned how these multipliers interact with one another, and I hope to a certain extent this has helped you in terms of making your build. You see, when I was playing in China, in, in the China server, I never really became strong. And that's because I would plan out the build, and then I would 
make that build. I have I had no knowledge on how these things these things work. So the only choice I had was to buy the gear and then do it myself. Which eventually resulted in a lot of failed experiments and with my character ending up as very less less than mediocre. So that's pretty weak there. Well, it's not that I'm strong right now, but compared to my character in China server, um the one I have in Seiya server is definitely much, much stronger. So what I'm trying to say is, if you don't have enough sources, if you don't have enough funds, you probably need to have an understanding of how these things works, right? But of course, nothing trumps, nothing beats actual testing. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what formula we're talking about. What matters is the number you see on the screen, right? So whatever, the, whatever higher number you're seeing there, that's probably where you're going to go to. You know, it's just that I feel like the game is much more fun if you play it with with the knowledge and how it works. So, and that's always been the guiding principle on why I've been making these videos. I'm not making this video because I wanna. I'm not making this video because I wanna prove people wrong or prove people right, or because I want people to. To you know, follow a certain build. Um, I'm making this video because I hope people would get to enjoy the game in the same manner I enjoy it. I think that's always what I've been trying to impart. You know, when I make a character build, I usually do the math before I actually buy the stuff. And sometimes I get disappointed because my math my math doesn't align right with the actual results, but sometimes it does. And those are some of those eureka moments where it's just awesome because I planned something, I executed it, and then I've got the results that I've planned for. And for me, this has been one of the most satisfying aspects of the game. So yeah, that's the purpose why I'm making this video. I want to a certain extent, I want people to enjoy the game in the same manner as I do. But yeah, then again, right? I mean, everything here is just basically based on my understanding of how it works. So it can be wrong, right? I mean, there could be times where it's wrong. So take everything with a grain of salt. Okay, well, that's it. Thanks everyone for, for watching the video. It's been pretty long again. Um, if you do have questions, if you do have clarifications, um, please feel free to let me know in the comment section below or maybe hit me up in Discord. Also, if you haven't subscribed yet, and if you do like the content that I've been putting out, feel free to subscribe to the channel, um, give us a like. And if you do have friends whom you think will benefit from watching the video, then don't hesitate to share the video to them. So again, thanks everyone for watching and... Well, we'll see you in the next video.